It was really sparked by my own personal experiences of looking around in my life and being like, I followed all the rules. I did all the things that I was supposed to do, and I'm not very happy. I'm actually quite unhappy. And that was the moment of spark that led me to want to go figure it out. And then when I got to grad school, I started reading all of this research and all of these scientists know this stuff already, right? Like Mm. they know that chasing external achievements isn't necessarily going to make you much happier. They know that connection and kindness and being of service and having a purpose, that's what matters most. And I was sort of frustrated because we had all of this information, but it wasn't disseminated in the public consciousness in any way. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started pulling those pieces together and trying to figure out ultimately like, where did we go wrong? What what happened? What were the stories and the messages that we received that have hurt us and in many ways um, affected so, so many of us? Um, and then I started to land on this idea that real happiness comes from helping other people. So using who you are in order to help other people to be happy. And then my life, I, I had a very difficult experience in my life where my partner suddenly became very ill. And out of nowhere, we were trying to, you know, save his life. And I was his full-time medical caregiver and our lives were just totally turned upside down. And I had this chance to uh, put these ideas into practice in my own life to see if they worked. And what amazed me was that even though my life was a mess in many ways, like everything that I had, uh, nothing that anyone would ever choose to experience in their lives I was still able to experience some level of happiness even during that time. And then when I contrasted it to the time in my early 20s when my life was like going well um, and I wasn't happy, it was just really fascinating to see how that played out. And that ultimately gave me a lot of confidence that, yes, this can really work for people and um, they, they should know about tools and strategies that help them. Yeah. And when you talk about the you know, that concept, it, it brings me back to like, let's start with the foundational like definition. Like, how do you define happiness? Cause it could be like temporary joy or it could be like yeah. fulfillment. <laughs> like it's, it's totally, <laughs> it can be so many things. And I don't think people are talking about the same things when they say happiness. So how do you define happiness? Yeah, it's such a good point. I think, um, you know, it's so important to recognize that these words like happiness, they ultimately end up getting colored by all of our contexts and our backgrounds and what we're told and all that kind of stuff. So happiness for me is the feeling and the state of being when you're connected to yourself, to others, or to the world around you. So those moments when you feel at peace with yourself, that's a sense of happiness. Those moments Mm -hmm. when you're having a really nice lunch with a friend, that's a moment of happiness. The times when you're out in nature or looking at the ocean, that's a moment of happiness. To me, it all comes back to that feeling of being connected. Mm. Okay. That's a great definition to get us started. So let's get into what is the old happy and what is the new happy? Like what were we taught and what are, where are we trying to go now? Okay. So old happy, we were taught that in order to be happy, you need to be perfect or get as close to it as possible. You need to optimize yourself and make yourself better. You need to achieve as much as you can. And usually what the people around you want you to achieve, not what you want to achieve, following a very particular path. And then you have to do it all by yourself. You can't ever lean on anybody. You can never struggle. You have to do it all alone. So those are the three core messages that we receive about happiness. And ultimately, what it turns into is a lot of people out there who are walking around thinking, I'm not good enough. I can show that I'm good enough if I achieve enough. And the best way to do that is to do it all by myself and to push through and achieve my own fulfillment and success. And that ends up making us miserable. Yep. And when you say this, I have you looked into whether this old happy definition is like a Western society thing? Like, is it cultural? Because I, I would imagine in different cultures, there it, there's slight variations, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's there's some really good research that's been done on that exact topic. Um, so a lot of these old happy influences, you're so right to call them out. They're very Western in nature. They're grounded in cultures like individualism, which are all about elevating the individual above the self. And that ends up hurting us in the way that it instills these values in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay. So what is the, the new happy? 
the new happy, the path that I believe is the very best way to experience happiness is to be who you are, who you really are, not anyone who you're trying to pretend to be, and then give yourself, give of yourself, help other people through who you are. So it's these two components of both be your individual self, but be that self situated in a broader context where you are contributing to others and they in turn are contributing to you. And those two elements are really important because not only does it help you to experience the personal joy and the fulfillment and the purpose, you know, and all the things that we want for ourselves, but it also ends up making other people happy at the same time. So elevating other people's well-being simultaneously. Yeah. So two comp- two components, one is being yourself and the other one is helping others. Because that exactly. is fulfilling yeah. as well. Okay. Can you break it down further or is it really just that simple? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can keep breaking it down. Yeah, yeah um, let's keep breaking it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. It's like unpacking a box, yeah, right? Like I um, love unpacking. Let's get deeper. <laughs> like what does it mean to be yourself? <laughs> another, another really good question, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot of what we've been taught about who we are is... Um, Not only just that pressure that we feel to be perfect, but also the belief that, you know, you're bad, you're not a good person, you, your weaknesses define you, you know, you always have to show and prove how worthy you are and all that kind of stuff. We have a lot of misplaced beliefs about our own selves. And I think that every person is good deep down, everyone is good. Like no babies are evil, right? Every, every baby has that inherent goodness. Sometimes horrible things happen to people and they lose sight of that. But at all times, people do have access to that. Um, people are full of amazing gifts. They have wonderful qualities that ha- they can share, that they can use to help other people. And those gifts include your humanity, which is who you are as a person. So that's your goodness, your wisdom, which is what you have experienced in your life and what you have learned from it. Because all of us are living completely unique lives and those lives give us, give us wisdom that no one else will ever have access to. And then the third is your talent, the things that you can do, the skills that you have, the strengths and capabilities. And so if you can discover those gifts not only do you get to figure out more about who you are, but then then you get to figure out how you want to share those with other people at the same time. Okay. Can you repeat the three just so we get a recap? (laughs) Humanity, which is who you are, your wisdom, which is what you know, and your talent, which is what you can do. Humanity, wisdom, and talent. So you have to hone in on those three things to understand who you are and what you have to offer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And like you can sort of think about it. um, Sometimes it's really helpful to use that framework to look at somebody else. So like thinking about your best friend or a partner or somebody in your life who you love, like you can see how wonderful they are as a person, right? Like their kindness and their curiosity and the way that they give you their presence, that's their that's their humanity. You can see their wisdom because they've gone through certain challenges in their lives and overcome them, or they've had unique life experiences that they can use to help other people. And then you can see their talents through what they do for work or how they show up in their community and all that. So, you know, you can also think about your gifts as like, what do people talk about at funerals? They talk about people's gifts. They talk about everything that the person offered through who they were and what they knew and how they behaved. So it can be a little tricky to find yours at first, but that's why having people around to show you and support you can be really helpful. Yeah. And I think it's nice because when you frame it in that way, then it's really about like the internal qualities versus like, oh, this person is this job or this person reached this status. Because going back to the idea of like old happy and new happy, old happy was like, you define yourself based on like your labels or external achievements. And then the new happy you're saying is you have to first understand like those invisible things that you have that is so valuable. And then use that in some way, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's that you've just nailed it. That's so beautifully said. Like, it's almost like, you know, um, you know, in Superman, when he like rips off his, his, his coat and stuff like that and turns into Superman, I always think Mm -hmm. of that image because it's like, that's kind of like what we're doing when we discover our gifts, you know, we're like sort of ripping off all those external things that we're carrying and showing who we really are on the inside. And I think that's really beautiful. Yeah. No, it's really nice to like discuss this with you because I feel like this framework is what I... I apply to my life and I share in my, in my channel as well, but we just use different terms, right? Like I I talk about it in the sense of, oh, 
this is how you feel like you live a purposeful life. And then you're talking about this is happiness, but really it's all the same thing. We just use different words to describe these facets, right? Totally. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think I'm, that's one of the reasons why I was so keen to talk to you about this stuff, because I know how much that matters to you. And I feel like, um, you know, like purpose is an inescapable part of happiness, right? Like you have to have something that you're living for. It can't just be about your own desires at the end of the day that often turns really hollow, doesn't it? <laughs> 